Okay, we'll have a look now at manual exposure. And um, if I go into the menu option, as we saw before, go back to the very first option there and movie exposure, and if I change that to manual, and then just click the shutter button to get us back to the main screen. We're now in manual mode. Just if I click the info button there, you can see there we go, the uh, M there telling us next to the camera that we're in manual mode. And uh, we're going to have to use uh, in manual mode the settings at the bottom here to try and uh, sort out our exposure. We're going to look at the ISO, uh, we're going to look at the aperture here, which is 14 here, and the shutter speed, which is uh, 60 here at the moment. So let's start with the ISO. Um, to change the ISO setting, if you click on the ISO or press the ISO button at the top here, I'll just zoom out so you can see that up here, and then you can see on the screen you can change it from auto to a predetermined ISO and you see you got to the top there it's going to be way overexposed so outdoor situations you're going to be almost which is sunlight today you're going to be kind of minimum ISO 100 um, if it gets a little bit dark you might get to 200 whereas indoors you're going to go in up to 1600 etc but for outside I'll leave that as 100 ISO 100 now and you can see it's slightly um, underexposed for that or according to the camera um, one stop under now the next thing we have a look at is the actual shutter speed now the shutter speed is 60 here but um, according to filmic rules rules of doing the films if you want to follow those that number should be equivalent to twice the uh, frames per second and the frames per second have to be set at the beginning when you decide what sort of recording you're going to do. So to find that, if you click on the Q button here, quick button, menu button, you see down there that option there which says 19, 20, 24. If I click on that, to set the uh, recording size, you see um, 24 frames per second, full HD, optimal for cinematography. And that's the one most people use and we're going to use that as well. So given that that number for the shutter speed has to be twice the frames per second, the frames per second were 24, so the shutter speed should technically be 48. Um, now to change the uh, shutter speed, I'm going to move the dial here, you can see you move it up and down. Now there isn't any 48 for the shutter speed, so the nearest I've got here on the Canon is uh, 50, which is fine, so I'm going to leave that at, at 50, and that should then be left for filming, that's going to be manually uh, uh, left at that. Then the only, only other option to change then is the is the aperture, and you can see at the moment that's set to uh, 14. Uh, so it's quite uh, a, um, a uh, narrow aperture. If I uh, use the AV button here, hold that down, and use the dial, you see I can reduce the aperture. That increases the amount of light coming into the camera. You can see because there's no longer auto exposure. If I do that, it overexposes. So to go back up, you can see it's still overexposed. Now to check the exposure again, just press the shutter button halfway and you can see the dial there tells me, or the uh, numbers at the bottom tell me it's one, just over one and one and a bit stops overexposed. So I'm going to hold the AV button again and I'm going to, inc to increase that number for the aperture to eight, which, in which is the converse, it actually reduces the amount of light coming in. To 9, 10 there you can see because there's more light now it's coming in there's more light in the scene and to get the uh, exposure there to the middle there what the camera regards as best exposure the aperture is now 11 there's probably no harm actually in having it slightly underexposed even um, that's often recommended to do because you can change under it it's easier to sort of um, correct underexposed uh, films than it is to correct overexposed anyway so that's um, manual setting, so to change all the manual settings there for the exposure. You can see that we've, we've got a, a manual exposure which is what we, what we want. Now that's fine, um, but it doesn't allow us to do one of the things which most people want to uh, do with these cameras, is to give it a filmic look and that involves a narrow uh, depth of field so that say for example Kate there would be in focus but all of the back area would be out of focus. Now um, with a 
And that's, that area of depth of field for focus is dependent upon the aperture. So for you to get that narrow depth of field, you've basically got to reduce that aperture down to a very low setting. And we'll have a go at that now. And again, we saw, had a, we had, we saw what happens before. So if I hold down the AV button, and I want to reduce that aperture down to a, minor, a very small setting, you can see there we've got a slight problem now in that the scene is too bright. Um, can't really do much about it because if we reduce it on this lens is a standard, uh, well not standard, it's a Canon, uh, Canon 1.8, it's a very good value 50 millimeter lens, has quite a wide aperture and it gives a good out of focus area behind but you can see there there's a slight problem because we can't do much about the um, make it so such a small aperture uh, such a small aperture because there's just too much light around so how do we get around that well we can't reduce the ISO anymore that, because it's down to the minimum now we can't change the shutter speed if this is photogra uh, photography you could increase the shutter speed up um, to compensate we can't because it's got to be set at 50 because of the uh, film convention so what can we do well we're stuck a little bit so the only thing you can do and what you have to start doing um, when you're filming uh, particularly outdoors and you want this narrow depth of field you have to start using filters to actually reduce the amount of light coming into the camera and we'll have a look now at adding filters here to uh, get the effect uh, we want okay so we're gonna have a look at putting on some um, ND filters this to reduce the amount of light coming into the camera I'll put on a uh, ND16 which should give four stops cut down the light by four stops These are, these are the screw on cooed ones. So I'll check the exposure now. You can see it's reduced it a good bit, it's reduced it down. So uh, exposed now um, just one and a half stops. So I'll put on a N ND4, uh, should give us another couple of stops down. I'll check the exposure there on that and you see that's knocked it under as we might expect the lights changing a little bit here but we're just underexposed so that's perfect so we've got our um, two filters on now and um, we've reduced the amount of um, light coming in and we're exposed correctly pretty well and you can see because of the um, aperture is 1.8 the background here is very uh, it's very blurred so you've got that sort of sh shallow depth of field I was talking about. So you can see here with by reducing the amount of light coming in so we can reduce the aperture down to the minimum on this lens um, we get the look we want which is a blurred background um, and we're obviously in focus here and uh, that's what you need to do to actually achieve that effect. Okay from the three of us thank you very much for watching and I hope you found that useful.